Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like relationships, self-identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. Today, I want to talk about something that I have been struggling with, And it is also something that I am hyper aware of that I'm going through. And I know that I am a work in progress when it comes to dealing with it. And that is my tendency to compare myself to others. I know that this is something that a lot of us are struggling with. And I almost felt like I am not qualified to be talking about this today. But I also know that because I am not there yet, what I'll be sharing today might feel somewhat relatable to you and help you feel a little bit less alone. So I am encouraged to talk about this today. There are many things that we tend to compare ourselves to others about. So on one hand, you have the traditional definition of success, like how you are doing in your job how much money you are making, if you are still in school, how is your grade doing compared to other peers that you are having. So there is that area of success that we often compare ourselves to others. And then there is the appearance side of things, like how can I look as beautiful as that celebrity? Is my nose sharp enough to look good in front of the camera? Or can I get boobs as big as this lady so that I become more attractive to the guys that I like? Or we may also compare ourselves in terms of the life experiences that our peers seems to be having. We look at pictures of our friends traveling and we start wondering, how is she able to have that much money to be traveling all the time? Or how we look at someone getting invited to exclusive party and wonder if we are living a loser's life. And then we look at other people's partners and their relationships and we question ourselves like, am I a loser for not being married at 30 while my friends are already having kids? Or maybe you look at someone's partner doing something really romantic on social media and then you question, why is your partner not doing these things? Or maybe, why is your partner doing something else? There is always something that we can compare ourselves to. And I would say that at this stage of our lives, I feel like comparison is really fueled by our social media influence and the society pressures and and all these unrealistic expectations that have been put onto us. And this constant comparison can be an unhealthy obsession that really leads to feelings of inadequacy, self-doubt, and dissatisfaction in life. I really think that that is a very dangerous place to be in, and that is why we really need to fix this. But in order for us to tackle this issue, we need to first understand why we are feeling this way. And as I was preparing my notes for this episode, I identified that there are two areas that we can look at into the cause of us comparing ourselves to others. On one hand, we have the internal self that we are struggling with. We come from a place of lacking that causes us to feel really insecure We felt like we are not good enough. We feel a lack of self-confidence. And when we feel that way, we tend to look outwards to seek validation by comparing ourselves to others. When we see people who are doing similar or a little bit worse off than us, we feel comforted in knowing that, hey, I'm not doing that shitty. But when we see people who are doing better than us, we feel even worse about our situation. Some of you might even experience a fear of judgment where you think that you are not good enough. Like what if people look down on me because they think that I am poor or they think that I am ugly. You are afraid of people's judgment. You think that their judgment is very important and it really bothers you if they think that way. That is a very common struggle. 
And then on the other hand, we have the external world that is creating this illusion of perfection that is making us feel even more inadequate. I felt like we were raised with really unrealistic societal standards when it comes to the definition of success or beauty or happiness. Like when we grow up watching traditional media, whether it's the television or the motion movies or the magazines, everything was often very filtered and airbrushed and edited to create this illusion for us. And we thought that that is the standard that we have to adhere to. And as media shifts into social media, everyday person like you and I could become an influencer and they have become the new standards that we look up to. So when we see that a person who is not a celebrity or not a successful politician or whatsoever, when we see that they are living a certain kind of life as well, it makes us feel like, oh, even as a normal person, I have to live up to at least this certain standard to be considered successful or beautiful. And that has, again, continued to amplify this comparison and make us feel even shittier by ourselves. So looking at these two areas, that is how exactly I'll be going through today's podcast episode as well. I would first be focusing on the internal, like the work that we can be doing internally to help us cope with this problem that we are struggling with and then I will go through the externals as well on how can we stop comparing ourselves to others. When it comes to dealing with our internal struggles, my tip is really to shift the focus to personal growth and there are a few ways that we can do it. The number one thing you need to understand is the opposite of lacking it is abundance. So in order to cope with that feeling of lacking on the inside, you need to first work on having an abundant mindset as compared to a scarcity mindset that most of us are very used to. Instead of thinking that there are limited resources out there for all of us to have, you need to know that there is actually an unlimited, abundant amount of goodness of money, of beauty, of ideas that is circulating on this earth and it's enough for all of us to own it. And just because that someone has a partner that is very loving and precious for them, it doesn't mean that you are not going to be able to find someone who is as gentle and kind and beautiful for yourself as well. And instead of focusing on what you don't have in your life, Focus on what you already have. One thing that you can do is to practice the gratitude exercise. There are many ways that you can do it. And how I like to practice it is in the morning on my drive to work, I like to talk to God about what are the things that I am grateful for in my life. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to pray as well. You can just think to yourself and list out all of the things that you are grateful for. Or if you are always busy in the morning and you often forget to do something, at night before going to the bed, you can also open up a journal and list down all the things that you are grateful for. You need to remember that when it comes to this list of things that you are grateful for, it really doesn't have to be fancy. It can be as simple as the fact that you can wake up in time to your alarm and not having to miss your bus to go to work on time. That is something worth being grateful for. My list consists of random things like I am grateful to be able to eat fishball noodle for lunch or how I am grateful for just having both my parents to be very healthy and strong at the moment. It's really about the perspective that you have Even when I was lying on the hospital bed last year because of an infection that I had, I counted my blessing. I was grateful that I didn't die and I had a medical card that allowed me to stay in a hospital without being too worried about the cost and stuff like that. A gratitude practice would be very helpful and important, especially when you are on the go and when you are very busy and stressed out and overwhelmed. 
because it is going to help you to slow down and breathe and appreciate the goodness that you have despite the pressure and the stress that you are going through. Now, another thing that you can do to really shift your focus into personal growth is to start manifesting. Now, I know how manifestation can sound really woo-woo and spiritual for those of you who don't understand what it is. I used to felt that way before until I started reading a lot of books about it to understand what is the science behind and why can we actually create the life that we want by manifesting it. And I would be recommending a few books which I'll be listing down in the show notes so you don't need to worry about it. I've read Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza who wrote about it from a physics, like quantum physics side of things. And there is also Psycho-Cybernetic which is, I would say, a life-changing mindset book for myself that is written by a plastic surgeon and this book really focuses a lot on self-identity as well. And there is also another book called Into the Magic Shop that is written by a neurosurgeon by sharing his personal experience about how he was able to use visualization to help him to live the life that he wants and kind of like the lesson in between that. The key of manifestation is not so much about just thinking about what you want in life, but it's truly about embodying the ideal person that you want to be. So it's not so much about fake it till you make it. Okay, I'm just going to give you an example, right? Say your ideal self is to become someone who is physically fit, who is someone who is very lean and practices a very healthy lifestyle. Instead of just thinking about the muscles and believing that you can get there, what you really want to do is to start visualizing yourself living your life already as the person who is physically fit. So you are going to embody this person. You are going to start doing the things as if you are already there. Chances are you would be hitting the gym pretty often. You would be taking a good care of your diet in a really sustainable way because this is something that you have already been very used to doing it. So this is just a very brief idea for you to understand it, but to really practice it, it's really a skill that you might take years to practice it. I am still at the very early stage of practicing visualization and manifestation. Perhaps it has been one or two years since I started learning more about it and practicing it. And I can see that it has already changed a lot of who I am and the things that I've been doing. So I truly believe in manifestation, even though that I felt like social media might have over-glamorized it. And I know that there are a lot of creators or even coaches out there that has kind of abused the name of manifestation. But I do believe in it. I just want to share about it. And I think that it is something that it is going to help you in shifting your focus into personal growth. Another thing that I want to teach you is to also start setting systems instead of goals. Okay, set systems, not goals. And this is something that I learned from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. And as much as I would like to deny it and be cool and to think differently from everyone else, I have to say that this is a life-changing book for myself. And one of the key lessons that I learned from this book is that you fall to the level of your systems. Your goal is your desired outcomes, while your system is the collection of daily habits that will get you there. Okay, this is so beautiful. I have to repeat it again. You fall to the level of your systems. Your goal is your desired outcome, while your system is the collection of daily habits that will get you there. So the key is really not so much about setting the goal, but on creating these daily habits, these systems that is going to help you to become the person that you want to be. So first, you still need to identify the destination that you want to be. 
which could be a financially independent person or maybe a well-traveled and well-lived person. And then you need to identify what are the daily habits or the small steps, the systems that is going to help you to become that ideal person that you would like to be. And in the journey of building these tiny habits that is going to help you embody the person as your ideal self, you need to also remember to often celebrate the milestones. It is often very easy to overlook the small steps that helps us to get to the big steps. Instead of focusing on the fact that you have yet to become a financially independent person, celebrate your small wins, like how you managed to live within your budget this month or how you were able to secure a side hustle that is going to help you to earn an extra side income. Or maybe it's just as small as you were able to pay off your monthly credit card bills in time. These are all small wins that deserve to be celebrated so that it doesn't make you feel as daunting that you are not there yet with your goal. Because you need to remember this, life is all about the journey. So we need to celebrate all these happy moments in the process as we get to that person that we want to become. And all in all, I've shared with you some steps that I felt like can help you to shift your focus from focusing on the negativity into your personal growth. But one thing you need to really remember is to really practice self-compassion and treat yourself with kindness and understanding. I feel like we are often a lot harsher to ourselves compared to other people around us. One way that I often like to remind myself is the things that I say to myself, would this be something that I tell my best friend? Tell yourself things that you would have told your best friends. Be encouraging, be gentle, be kind. And the journey of focusing on your personal growth would be a lot easier and more comfortable and just more doable. Now, next up, how can we nurture our externals to make it easier for you to focus on the inside? Since we've identified that social media is definitely one of the things that has made it so much easier for us to compare ourselves, there are some things that you can do to really curate your social media experience on a day-to-day life. Now, one thing you can do is if you find yourself to be comparing yourself to someone else pretty often, if you're able to identify a certain influencer or a friend, what I would do is actually to mute this person on social media. Assuming that you use Instagram the most, right? You can actually tap on the following button on Instagram and choose to mute their stories or their feed posts or their reels. So your friend is not going to know that you've done that This is going to allow you to detach yourself from looking into their content and being triggered to compare yourself to. Assuming that this is a friend that you don't want to lose and you still want to keep them, but maybe looking at their life might be triggering for yourself. If not, if this is someone that you felt like no longer serve you in your life, you can go ahead to unfollow that person as well. I personally am just very icky when it comes to unfollowing people. Like I don't want to be so harsh when it comes to our friendship. So I just usually just mute the person and let it slide because I don't want to offend people and build more enemies. So I usually just mute people. But if you prefer to unfollow people, just do it. One more thing that you can do is to actually switch up what you are looking at when you are scrolling on social media. So instead of just consuming your friend's content or your competitor's content or influencer's content, you can switch up and look into your Pinterest bot instead. Look for healthy recipes or maybe positive quotes or certain videos like pet videos or dog videos that makes you laugh. I actually created my vision board on Pinterest and so my Pinterest recommendation page is always filled with certain fashion style or healthy recipes that would fit into my mood board and and I often leave Pinterest feeling very inspired and motivated because I'm exposed to all these things that my ideal self would have loved. Besides curating your social media habits, 
one thing that you need to also do is to really distance yourself from friends or family who are triggering you to compare yourself. Now, I know that some of you, especially with Asian parents, they love to compare us to our siblings or our cousins or our friends. If possible, I hope that you are able to distance yourself from them, whether it's just by locking yourself in the room a little bit more. Or if you are fortunate, maybe you can communicate with your parents. That would be great. If not, maybe you can move out from your home or to really distance yourself from that negative energy. And in terms of friends, I find myself to be unfollowing a lot of my friends who love to flaunt their material goods on social media because I find it too annoying. Of course, it triggers me to compare myself to them, but more so, I just felt like they come from a place of insecurity that, that they felt the need to show off their wealth or whatever they have to other people and... I just felt like it no longer served me and I needed to unfollow that. So do that if you can do it. And of course, you also want to distance yourself from friends who love to gossip or compare themselves to other people. That's the bad energy that we really don't want in our life. So the sooner you can eliminate these people, the better it is. That is going to be good for your mental health, for your personal headspace. And one last thing that I want to share, and I really believe it's going to help you to stop comparing yourself to other people, is to really embrace your individuality and your authenticity. You are put into this world as who you are today. You are created specially with the gifts and talents that you have, with the appearance that you have. Whether if you see it as a lacking, as a gift, it is something that is uniquely you. There is no one else in this world who would share the exact combination of appearance, gifts, talents, personality, experiences as you have. So why not embrace it? I know. It is easier said than done when we look at what everybody else has and what we don't have. But when you are able to embrace who you are as a person, when you are able to see that this difference that you have as compared to what everyone else is, the sooner you can see it, the sooner you can shine. Focus on embracing who you are instead of trying to hide them to conform to what everyone else is having or what everyone else are just doing. I truly believe that we all have a certain calling in life, a purpose in life that is made for this unique combination that we were given. And I also truly believe that if you are able to embrace it, if you are able to tap into your own zone of genius, that is when you are going to be able to shine the most. I think that as time passes, going from an insecure high school kid into the person that kind of don't give a fuck anymore at 30 years old, what really changed the ballgame for me is when I am able to embrace my individuality as me. I was able to Embrace the fact that I went through depression and came out stronger. I was able to see the beauty of my appearance on how this look that used to be deemed as ugly because I have smaller eyes, I have imperfect skin, and I am short physically. This could all be seen as negative qualities when I was growing up, but I've learned to see the beauty in it and to embrace it as well. And when I am able to really see the goodness in all of this being put into one person as me, as Wendy, I think that is when I started to really shine and embrace myself in this world. And I really hope that that is going to help you shine in your own way as well. So that is all that I have for you today. I understand the struggle of comparing yourself to others. I personally am most insecure when it comes to where I am financially. I really couldn't help but comparing myself to what my friends were doing a lot. 
like how they are able to have the money to travel, to eat good food in certain fancy restaurants, to buy that beautiful dress or that exclusive limited edition bags. Like all these things bothers me. But it is also something that I am hyper aware of and I am constantly shifting the focus on my personal growth to help me get out of it as well. And I really hope that you would find these tips that I share with you today to be very helpful. And yeah, if you enjoyed this podcast episode, do give it a five-star rating on Spotify or give it a thumbs up on YouTube. It is really going to help me a lot as a small podcast creator. And I hope to see you in my next episode. Goodbye.